Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Please join me in welcoming the parliamentary secretaries designate and their spouses. Please give them a round of applause. Please be seated. May I take this opportunity to remind our guests to please place your mobile de devices in the off position. Thank you so very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me now as we welcome the Honorable I. Chester Cooper, the Member of Parliament for Exuma, Exuma Keys and Ragged Island, Deputy Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, Minister of Tourism, Investment and uh, Aviation, and Mrs. Cecile Cooper. Please give the Deputy Prime Minister a round of applause. <clears throat> Please remain standing as we welcome now the Honorable Philip Edward Davis QC, Member of Parliament for Cat Island, Rumkey, and San Salvador. Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And the Prime Minister is accompanied by his dear wife, Mistress Davis. <laughs> Distinguished guests, please remain standing and join me 
as we welcome the Most Honorable Sir Cornelius A. Smith, O.N. GCMG, Governor General of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, and Lady Clara Smith. Please. May I invite you to remain standing for the national anthem of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. The national anthem will be played by the Royal Bahamas Police Force Band. Following the national anthem, Bishop Helen Matfi, senior pastor at Agape Baptist Church, will lead us in prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Father, it's in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. We say thank you for gathering, pulling us together in this setting. Thank you, O oh God, for what you have already done. As we, your people, humble ourselves under your mighty hand. Thank you, O oh God, for the reason that we are here today. We thank you, O oh God, for the success 
of this coming together. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that is already in this room. And so, Holy Spirit, we welcome you to move and to do what is already set. Thank you now, Father, that everything that is your will, let it be done. And we say thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Bishop McPhee. Please be seated. I am honored, Excellency, I am honored on your behalf to once again advance a special welcome to our many distinguished guests. We are all too aware of the busy schedule of the many gathered here. And for this, we say thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to share this occasion with us. We recognize the presence of honorable cabinet ministers, senior government officials, those from the private sector, and those joining us by way of radio, television, and social media. Your Excellency, the Constitution of the Bahamas makes provision for the appointment of parliamentary secretary. Today's appointment are pursuant to Article 81 of the Constitution, which states, the Governor General, acting in accordance with the advice of the Prime Minister, may appoint members of the House of Assembly to assist ministers in the performance of their duties. Parliament secretaries may table documents or answer questions on ministers' behalf. End of quote. There are no parliamentary secretaries during the dissolution of Parliament. Excellency, should it please you, may I invite and proceed with the swearing in of the Honorable Parliamentary Secretary. I should like to invite Mr. John H. W. Pinder II, the Member of Parliament for Central and South Abaco. Mr. Pinder will take the oath of office as Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Investment, and Aviation.
Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John H. W. Pinder II. Let's give him a round of applause. Excellency, it is my pleasure to present at this time, take his oath of office, Mr. Bacchus O. Rowe. <laughs> Mr. Rowe is the member of parliament for South Beach and he will take the oath of office as Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Works and Utilities. Any account at any time whatsoever, close counsel, advice, opinion, or vote of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary that I will not accept with the authority of the cabinet and to such extent as, many, as may be required for the good management of the affairs of the Bahamas directly or indirectly feel the business or proceedings of the cabinet or the nature, content of any documents communicated to me as parliamentary secretary or any other matter coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such and that in all things I will be true and faithful parliamentary secretary. So help me God.
you can see the excitement beaming on the faces of the family members of Paul Sack Roll. Thank you very much. The Member of Parliament for Mangrove Key and South Andros, Mr. Leon E. Lundy. will serve as Parliamentary Secretary in the Office of the Prime Minister. I, Leon Edward Lundy, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. I, Leon Lundy, being appointed Parliamentary Secretary, do swear that I will do the best of my judgment at all times, when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General or any other person for the time being lawfully performing the functions of that office for the good management of the public affairs of the Bahamas. And I do further swear that I will not on any account at any time whatsoever disclose the counsel, advice, opinion, or vote of any particular minister of parliament, she secretary, and that I will not accept with the authority of the cabinet and to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of the Bahamas, directly or indirectly reveal the business or proceedings of the cabinet or the nature or contents of any documents communicated to me as parliamentary secretary or any other matter coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such and that in all things I will be true and faithful parliamentary secretary. So help me God.
please let's hear it for the Paul Sack. Mr. Cook, Daniel Cornish, <laughs> member, <laughs> me, member of Parliament for North Abaco, will take the oath as Parliamentary Secretary in the office of the Prime Minister stationed in Abaco. I, Kirk, Daniel Cornish, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. I, Kirk Cornish, Daniel Cornish, being appointed Parliamentary Secretary, do swear that I will, to the best of my judgment at all times, when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General or that office for the good management of the public affairs of the Bahamas. And I do further swear that I will not, on any account, at any time, whatsoever disclose the counsel, advice, opinion, or vote, or any particular minister or parliament, parliamentary secretary that I will not accept with the authority of the cabinet and do such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of the Bahamas, directly or indirectly reveal the business or proceeding of the cabinet or the nature or contents of any documents communicated to me as parliament secretary or any other matter to my knowledge and my capacity as such, and that at all things I will be a true and faithful parliament section. So help me God.
Mr. Wade Alexander Watson, the Member of Parliament for Bainstown and Grantstown, will affirm as the Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Economic Affairs. I, Wade Alexander Watson, do solemnly, sincerely, truly declare and affirm that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty's Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. I, Wade Alexander Watson, being appointed Parliamentary Secretary do solemnly, sincerely, truly affirm and declare that I will be to the best of my judgment at all times when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General or any other person for the time being lawfully performing the functions of that office. For the good management of the public affairs of the Bahamas, and I do further affirm that I will not on any account at any time whatsoever disclose to counsel, advice, opinion, or vote of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary. And, I, and that I will not accept with the authority of the cabinet and to such extent as may be required for any good judgment of the affairs of the Bahamas directly or indirectly reveal the business or proceedings of the cabinet or the nature or contents of any documents communicated to me as parliamentary secretary or any other matter coming to my knowledge in the capacity as such that in all things I may be true, a true and faithful parliamentary secretary.
Parliamentary Secretary, Mr. Wade Alexander Watson. Excellency, I present the next Parliamentary Secretary to you, Mr. Jamal D'Angelo Strawn, <laughs> Member of Parliament for Nassau Village. Mr. Strawn will take the oath of office as Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I, Jamal D'Angelo Strawn, to swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. I, Jamal D'Angelo Strawn, being appointed Parliamentary Secretary, do swear that I will, to the best of my judgment, at all times, when so required, freely give my counsel and advice to the Governor General or any other person for the time being lawfully performing the functions of that office. For the good management of the public affairs of the Bahamas, and I do further swear that I will not on any account at any time whatsoever disclose the counsel, advice, opinion, or vote of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary, and that I will not except with the authority of the cabinet and to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of the Bahamas, directly or indirectly reveal the business or proceedings of the cabinet or the nature or contents of any documents communicated to me as parliamentary secretary or any other matter coming to my knowledge and my capacity as such, and that in all things I will be a true and faithful parliamentary secretary. So help me God.
You can do a little better than that. That's the Paul Sack for four in the fast. And Paul Sack, strong on behalf of His Excellency, their Excellencies, and all of us gathered here, we sincerely wish you well, and we offer our condolences to you as well. We are told that you left your father's funeral to be here today. So we, we thank you. We round off our swearing in of parliamentary secretaries with the oath to be taken by Mr. Leonardo E. Lightborn. Mr. Lightborn is the elected member of parliament for North Andros and the Berry Islands. He will take the oath as parliamentary secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Marine Resources, and Family Island Affairs. I, Leonardo da Vinci Leibon, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. I, Leonardo da Vinci Leibon, being appointed Parliament Secretary, do swear that I will do my best of my judgment at all times, when so required, freely given my counsel and advice to the Governor General. Also, any other person for the time being lawfully performing the functions of that office for the good management of the public affairs of the Bahamas. And I do further swear that I will not on any account at any time whatsoever disclose the counsel, advice, opinion, or vote of any particular minister or parliamentary secretary, and that I will not, except with the authority of the cabinet and to such extent as may be required for the good management of the affairs of the Bahamas, directly or indirectly, reveal the business or proceedings of the cabinet or the nature or contents of any documents communicated to me as parliamentary secretary or any other manner coming to my knowledge in my capacity as such, and that in all things I will be true and faithful Parliamentary Secretary, so help me God.
Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and give a rousing round of applause to all of our newly appointed parliamentary secretaries. I should like to invite you to give their excellencies a round of applause. That's a Thank you, Excellency. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, on such occasions, it is always a pleasure to hear from the Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And today, we look forward to hearing from our Prime Minister on this very special occasion. Following the rendition, the Royal Bahamas Police Force Band. The next voice you will hear, as they would say in the church, the next voice you will hear is that of our Prime Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, give the band a round of applause and the Prime Minister will follow. Each day I live, I want to be a day to give the best of me. I'm only one, but not alone. My finest day is yet unknown. I broke my heart for every game to taste the sweet. I face the pain. I rise and fall. Yet through it all, this much remains. I want one moments in time when I'm more than I thought I could be when all of my dreams are hard beat away and the answers are all up to me give me one moments in time when I'm racing with destiny for in that one moment in time I will feel I will feel eternity I live to be the very best I want it all no time for less I laid the plans now lay the chance here in my hands I want one moments in time when I'm more than I thought I could be when all of my dreams are hard beat away and the answers are all up to me give me one moment 
when I'm racing with destiny for in that one moment in time I will feel I will feel eternity Please be seated. <laughs> Your Excellency, Governor General and Mr. Smith, First Lady, my wife Anne Marie, Deputy uh, Tester Cooper and Mrs. Cooper, my cabinet colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Over the past few days, I have spoken in earnest about my intention to lead an administration that works in partnership with the Bahamian people. For me and my colleagues, the concept of servant leadership is not, is not just an idea. We want to transform governance in our country and make servant leadership a living breathing reality. I shall say more about that later, but for now, I wish to underscore the fact that an essential component of servant leadership is the need to work together, to consult, to consider, to understand, and to action the will of the people. We have all seen how the rule by one man has damaged our country. We will not make that mistake. I will do everything possible to work in the best interests of the Bahamian people. And so today, as we welcome into, into post the seven parliamentary secretaries who have just been sworn in, I want to take the opportunity to expand a little on the broad reasoning and rationale behind the cabinet appointments. Our country is in crisis. These challenges are unprecedented in scale and scope, in breadth and depth. Experience in government has taught me how easy it is to get caught up in dealing with what is urgent because of the need to address the day-to-day -day priorities. The result is that if you are competent, you just solve the present problems. In our present situation, doing just this will be no easy feat. But in solving the day-to-day -day problems, the bigger things often get left, be left behind and undone. Our mandate is bigger than that. The Bahamian people voted for change, big change, transformational change. Unlike the previous administration, we intend to keep our promises. This requires work. This requires effort. And if you are determined to get things done, first of all, you need to make sure you have a team in place that is heavily focused on the things you wish to get done. This is why my, in my remarks yesterday, I alluded to the need to put all hands on deck. Afterwards, members of the press queried the need for the size of the cabinet that I've appointed. It made me realize that I needed to spell out in greater detail exactly what the job of this cabinet will be. Put briefly, the challenges are multifaceted and multi-layered, and the opportunities we intend to create are great. Let me explain. For example, when we talk of the health crisis, getting on top of the COVID-19 pandemic is the most urgent and most obvious issue. Every country in the world has encountered challenges, but the previous administration failed miserably, which is why the Bahamas 
was consistently ranked at the bottom of the global league tables, 179th out of 180 countries for the government's handling or mishandling of the pandemic. We urgently have to fix this, and implementing our COVID action plan alone could take all of the minister's attention. But there's so much more that needs urgent attention. The collapse of the healthcare system, the collapse of the Rand Memorial Hospital in Grand Bahama, the non-functioning clinics throughout our islands, the shortage of doctors and nurses, the exhaustion and complete demoralization of all our healthcare workers that led to, strike, to a strike recently. And the list goes on. These are not the usual problems of an incoming Minister of Health. If we are to solve these problems and yet still expand opportunities by getting NHI back on track, build new hospitals, expand medical tourism and so on, it will take determined effort. And we go even further. If we are to succeed in our wellness program and support the many Bahamians who are struggling with mental health issues, many arising from the catastrophe of Dorian and the pandemic, we are, if we are to succeed in this program, it needs focused attention. Let me give another example. We are currently faced we currently face a desperate crisis in housing in our Bahamas. And virtually nothing was done to address it during the past four and a half years. What does this mean for governance? There's been a sharp rise in homelessness, which means that social services needs to be more actively and better support, supported for those who are affected. It is not good enough to offer people shelter for just a week. So we need to increase the stock of temporary and permanent housing. This falls under both the ministries of housing and the environment and social services. Thousands of people will struggle with rents and mortgages. So they are the issues of affordability to deal with. Many people are still living in their cars in tents and in substandard accommodation. Others are living in very crowded conditions with relatives or friends. I am deeply concerned about the loss of dignity and a loss of sense of security that comes with living in this way. When you think of the impacts on health and education that go with such living conditions, then you begin to really appreciate what our administration has to deal with. On top of all these present crises, longer term, we need to ensure that our housing needs are adequate to meet the estimated growth in population. And we need to ensure that our housing stock is sufficiently resilient to withstand the future impacts from climate change with the anticipated increase in number and frequency of hurricanes and the rise in sea levels that come with it. As I have said on many occasions, we do not flinch from these challenges we are prepared to face them head on. But we need the resource, especially the human resource, to do it. Then think, really think, about the other challenges in education, about the state of our crumbling infrastructure with the roads, with BPL, with water and sewage. And this is before any mention of the state of the public finances. Remember the $10 billion in debt? $10 billion in debt. We need to rescue our economy from the edge of this fiscal cliff. If we are to address these many crises, while at the same time creating the opportunities and implementing the fundamental change that we have been mandated by the Bahamian people, then I say we need all hands on deck. And so I turn now to today's appointments of parliamentary secretaries. Around the Commonwealth, parliamentary secretaries undertake important functions, supporting the work of their ministers, especially in parliament. We have made substantial promises in our intention to be open and transparent and to be held accountable. And so we have to also take seriously how we ensure 
that Parliament functions well so that our democracy continue to develop and thrive. So to support the work of the Minister of Agriculture, I've appointed Mr. Leonardo Leipon. His strong track record as a successful entrepreneur will help to support our efforts, especially in respect of enhancing food security. To support the work of the Office of the Prime Minister, I've appointed Leon Lundy. His experience as an accountant in the hospitality industry and in community development will help to ensure that our initiatives have impact on the ground, helping the very people they are meant to benefit. To help address the specific needs of the people of Abaco, which is still suffering from the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian, I've appointed Mr. Kirk Cornish. His practical experience of the national infrastructure gained through his work with the Water and Sewage Corporation in Abaco will support our work in helping to rebuild the communities of Abaco. I've already referred to the enormous challenges we face in dealing with the economy. And so to the Ministry of Economic Affairs, I've appointed Mr. Wade Watson. His wealth of knowledge and experience in technology and in the community will tremendously enhance the operation of that ministry. As we move to resume our engagement internationally, seek out opportunities to help grow our economy and benefit from global support around climate change, I've appointed Mr. Jamal Strong to support the work To support the work of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, given his professional experience within that ministry at the council level, he'll be able to provide immediate practical support to this portfolio. As Minister, as tourism returns and our investment climate improves, we do not intend merely to, back, to get back to the way things were done before. It is clear that the old ways no longer work for the vast majority of ordinary Bahamians. And so, to support the work of the Minister of Tourism, Investments, and Aviation, I have appointed Mr. John Pinder. <laughs> the portfolio of the Ministry of Works and Utilities is broad and expansive much of it impacting the day-to-day -day lives of the Bahamian people. Because of his first-time knowledge, expertise, and experience of working for BPL in the bank, Bank of the Bahamas, to serve this ministry, I've appointed Mr. Barker's role. I have every confidence that each of these appointments will serve the Bahamian people faithfully and well and help to bring about that new day we have promised. As we go forward, I ask you to continue to pray that we may succeed in all that we do on behalf of and for the benefit of the Bahamian people. May God continue to bless us all and bless the Commerce of the Bahamas. Thank you. You may be seated. We have just about, thank you so very much, Prime Minister. Thank you. Thank you so very much. We're just about completed with this ceremony. But before we bring these uh, ceremonies to a close, I wish on behalf of His Excellency, the Governor General, to thank the many persons who assisted us in the swearing-in ceremonies, and ensuring that the ceremonies were, and this one, all of them are successful. 
First, I should like to invite you to give a round of applause to our Prime Minister for the instructions to have these ceremonies. First class. First class. I should like to sincerely thank Mr. Robert Sandy Sands and his wonderful team here at Bahama, Ms. Deshree Moxie, Director of Events, the Encore Director, the Security Detail, the Parking Lot Attendants, and the Culinary and Food Services staff, and the Custodial staff for a job well done. We are grateful. I should also like to advance the special thanks to the Commissioner of Police and the members of the Royal Bahamas Police Force Band, to Commodore of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force and the Defense Force Band. We thank you so, so very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> the religious leaders who offered prayers for us, thank you so very much. Whether it was the invocation or the benediction, we left this place knowing that God is with us. Thank you so very much. We thank Mr. Terry Archer and the staff of the Protocol Division of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the staff of the Office of the Prime Minister, and the staff at the Cabinet Office. We thank Mr. Stephen Collins and the staff at Government Printing for a wonderful job on our programs. I should also like to thank the staff of the Office of the Governor General under the leadership of Ms. Wallace. Thank you so very much for your help. And finally, I wish to thank all of the media houses. Once we say, come, Show up, be here, they're here. Let's hear it for the media houses, please. <laughs> Just before we invite Bishop Helen McPhee to give us the closing prayer, which will be followed by the national anthem, I should like to invite the parliamentary secretaries to step forward for an official photo, please. All the parliamentary secretaries, thank you very much. And Ban, can you play something while we um, have the official photos? I sit here, counting memories by the score, thinking of the days I spent with a girl I still adore. Yes, I'm going back to see her 
Before my days are done Going back to see her In the land of the sea and sun May I invite you to stand at this time for prayer, which will be offered by Bishop Helen Maffey. Please remain in your places for the singing of the national anthem, and we will have the exit or the departure of their excellencies followed by the Prime Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, prayer. Our Father in heaven, we do thank you. Father, we praise you and we bless you. We honor your awesome presence. Thank you for these able men that has given themselves for service that we can experience and continue to give you the glory that will be seen in our country. And now, Father, we thank you for setting your approval on all that has taken place throughout this week and this morning. Order our steps in your word, Father, that we will be the instrument that will, will be used first to give you glory. And that we as a people will continue to be proud in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Have your way. Take full control of this nation. I plead the blood of Jesus over our Prime Minister and the entire country. I pray, O oh God, that we will all be sensitive first to you, to the Holy Spirit, that we do need to lead and guide and direct us. That there will be those of us with the mind and spirit. Glory to God of the sons of Issachar who stayed in communion with you. That we will counteract all that will be happening in the darkness. Declare and decree your word. I take full control now, Father, in the name of Jesus, that your divine will be done and your kingdom will come in our country. We thank you. We declare and decree your will be done in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you just play a musical for the departure of the excellencies, please? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.